Okay, I'm going to talk about the normal function of the non-gravid bovine uterus. Well, non-gravid means not pregnant. So if you ever have a gravid uterus, that means there's a pregnancy in there. And I've dissected, you name the animal, I've dissected pregnant horse uteri, pig, sheep, goats, you name it. So this is interesting, but I want to talk about the normal function, okay? So, I want to remind you about the ester cycle in cattle. It's 21 days from one esters to another. It's not seasonal, and if they're never pregnant and they're fed right, it goes year round. So you could go 21 days, so that would be like what? That's that 15, 16, 17 ester cycles if they're not bred. The first thing you should know is, and I'm gonna show you pictures of these, when the animal ovulates, it forms this structure on the ovary called the CL, the corpus luteum, which makes progesterone. Without progesterone, pregnancy is not possible. So if somehow you inhibited that progesterone from being made, you would have a spontaneous abortion, it would be called. And there's a very famous progesterone antagonist made in France. Anybody remember that molecule? R U. It's the letters R U four eighty six. Okay. Anyway, but look at this. There's waves of follicles on the ovary that are forming even when they're not in heat. And notice how they form, but then see this, they die. They undergo atresia. But if for some reason you were like synchronizing estrus, like you can do with prostaglandin and F2-alpha, luteolice and there's other names, if you killed the CL here, these follicles might be the one that ovulate. So you, they can ovulate more frequently than every 21 days. That's very interesting. Okay, so then every 21 days, let's put it that way, estrus cycles. One other thing, when you see this LH that comes from the brain, that's a spike of LH. Ovulation usually always occurs 24 hours after that spike. The spike refer, uh, is actually causes the beginning of estrus, and then 24 hours later, ovulation occurs. Then if you look at the morphology, then the ovary is going through something cyclic, right? There's the ovum that's released from this ruptured follicle, and right in that spot, it temporarily fills with blood and it changes into the corpus luteum. So this is a nice diagram. They left that space right there and they made, say, new CL. There's old CLs, but it doesn't have to be on the same ovary. Notice how they drew it on the same ovary, but there's two ovaries. The old CL could be on the other ovary. Anyway, a cycle, cycle, and that's our main focus. Now, the other thing I had fun with this is I didn't make any of these slides. I stole them from the internet. <laughs> Because remember how I, I like to do this in classes? I like to see what other people did and I can criticize or correct. But I want to read this. Cows are polyesters. That's saying they're going to cycle all the time, go through a number of successions during the year. Okay, now here's what I don't really like. Undergo esters several times a year. That sounds like it's two or three or four, but no, it's every 21 days. So that's got to be, what, 15 or 16 ester cycles? So I don't like that phrase. 21 days, but there's some, you know, it can be a little shorter, a little longer. And then... This will be one big take-home thing. If you can look at the discharges coming out of the vagina and they're on the vulva, and if you know a few other things, you can say if that's normal or abnormal. And I'm going to show you that. So there's a bloody discharge. I don't really like this during estrus because it's not bloody during estrus. It's clear, and I've got a picture of it. It's bloody what's called metestrus, but it has nothing to do with pregnancy or conception. Years ago, People would AI dairy cattle, and if they saw this metesters bleeding about two or three days after heat, after breeding, they'd go, oh, we don't have conception. Because it looks like something abnormal. The thing is, the fertilized egg is still up in the oviduct, and the blood is coming from the uterus, but it's not going to harm the egg because it's up in the oviduct. So it's a kind of a misnomer. But there is a little bleeding. Okay, so here's another fact. Puberty, six to 12 months of age, ester cycle, 21 days, standing heat, Look how short that is for a beef cow or a dairy cow. You have less than a day to find an animal in heat. And too bad they don't work like horses because horses are in heat five, six days. Ovulation occurs after estrogen. Oops, sorry. That's the other thing. A cow comes into heat, goes out of heat, and then after she goes out of heat, she ovulates. So if you're doing AI, if you AI her right when she's coming into heat, that's not a good fer fertile time. It's too long before ovulation. It's actually better to 
inseminate a cow near the end of heat or after heat's over, which is kind of weird to think about, right? Um, okay, occurs after gestation, if you're not familiar with that, 285 days, 283 days, whatever. Okay, here's a bird's eye view of the uterus because now I'm going to show you some actual uteri. This is what's called a dorsal view. You're flying over a cow, and if you could look down through the backbone, this is the surface that's facing the backbone, a dorsal view. Always symmetrical. You know, here's the midline. What's on the left is on the right. So this is truly left, this is right, two ovaries, so forth. I'll show you real ones. Okay, here's a real one that's pretty close to that last one. Look at, right there, there's a the midline. There's the midline right there. Ovary, ovary, and it doesn't show the cervix or the rest of the reproductive tract. The, ki the kicker is, see those almost like blister-like uh, structures on the ovary? That's follicles. You'll always see follicles. This one doesn't show a CL, and before puberty, you would never find a CL. Because that's a definition of a... When a cow reaches puberty, there would be a CL. You're right, Stella. Okay. I'm over here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, here's another one. But look at that big red thing. That's what makes progesterone. And that's what promotes normal pregnancy. So here's an ovary, and here's one that's cut in half. It's probably this very same one. Okay, they tend to be reddish, but then they can get kind of yellowish. Okay? But now I still haven't shown you the normal function of the uterus, how the ovary interacts with the uterus. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> now one thing is, on the inner surface of the uterus, you're always going to find little bumps. And every little bump is a place where the placenta attaches. So like there's a bump, bump on the uterus, and then on the uterus it attaches to those bumps. And I'll show you a diagram. All those bumps have blood vessels, and they end up going into the umbilical cord. Okay, but if you ever dissect a tract like this, and you've got bumps over here that are small, and bumps over here that are bigger, this is where pregnancy occurred. This is a postpartum uterus, because the bumps are called caruncles, and they're very small in the non-gravid tract, but they get this size in a pregnant one. And then they have to involute. That's the second topic I'm talking about today. I just want to show you these bumps. And they, they're all, they, they never, an animal is born with so many caruncles, and that's all there is. They never grow or disappear. They can get scarred and lead to infertility later, but there's always a set number. Okay, now, here's the discharge at estrus. When you see this, and you see it morally, mostly in young heifers, not cows, because this is coming from the cervix, this clear, almost egg yolk-like substance. That's a good sign if you're inseminating and you're manipulating the track, because that says she's probably in estrus. So clear mucus, big cows, it tends to pool in the basement of the vagina or the base of the vagina, and you don't see it come out. But whenever you see that, and you think she's in heat, that's another thing like, okay, she probably is. Now, if you walk by a cow and see this, you go, oh, trouble, trouble. If this is two days after heat, that's normal. If I knew that heifer or cow, here's the tail, so this is the vulva. If I knew that heifer was in heat or cow two or three days ago, I'd walk by there and not even stop. But I'd write it down. Because if I didn't see her in heat, then I know she was in heat two days ago, and then I can calculate the 21 bases. If I see this, I know she'll be in heat maybe in 18 days. People used to see this and say, oh, she's not pregnant. I inseminated her and she's not pregnant. This has nothing to do with pregnancy. Interesting. Okay, so then, I, this is a little diagram. Remember, I stole all this stuff off the internet. I wanted to show you how the uterus releases a luteolytic <laughs> hormone that kills the CL. Thank you. This is perfect. Okay, so the uterus is over here. It's not showing. But there's a venous outflow from the uterus, that'd be the uterine vein, and prostaglandin F2-alpha is coming out of it. They're doing an experiment. They had tritiated PGF2-alpha, but the uterus that's not pregnant is going to send out PGF2-alpha. But listen to this. So there's a hormone coming off of the uterus if it's not pregnant. And it's heading back towards the heart. But the kicker is you want it to work here. But if it went all the way back to the heart, it would go through the lungs, 
and the lungs degrade PGF to alpha. So the cow is pretty smart. You have this hormone coming out of the venous effluent, and then see this artery here? The artery and vein are very close, and the PGF2 alpha diffuses out of the uterine vein into the ovarian artery and kills the CL. So I'll refresh your memory. A non-gravid uterus pumping out PGF2 alpha, it's coming this way, but these veins are very close together, and it's a countercurrent exchange because they're flowing in opposite directions. And some of the PGF2 alpha gets into the artery and then kills the CL. Now, if there's a pregnancy in this horn, the PGF2 alpha isn't released into the blood, and the CL lives. So when a CL is formed, it doesn't know if it's going to live just 21 days for an ex-estrus or 284 days. So if you had to pack, and if you had to pack for, I'll tell you, we're taking a 19-day trip or a 280-day trip, what would you pack for? The 280-day trip. So every CL is ready to live 280 days. And you know why? how you can prove that? Hysterectomize the cow. Take the uterus out, leave the ovaries up there with the CL, and the CL will live 280 days. Okay, I think i got one more slide. This is to refresh your memory. When a cow is pregnant, pregnancy only occurs in one horn. Here's the fetus, the placenta, and the fetus has to be on the ipsilateral side of the CL. If that fetus was over here and the CL was over there, this empty horn would kill the CL. So an embryo transfer, when you transfer embryos, you know, in cattle, you have to determine which side ovulated and you put the embryo in the ipsilateral horn. Anybody have any questions on the normal uterine function of the cow? Yes? Do they still have that bleeding during pregnancy or not? And that's why people oh, so the question is, do they have bleeding during pregnancy? 